Okay, hello everyone. I'm working for the Finnish broadcasting company, but today I'm presenting the, the MIMAD project and, and I'm just going to give you a quick overview what the project is about. It's got plenty of facets, plenty of lines of work, so if you get interested by, by some area, please contact me or any of the other project partners and, and we'll talk more about the details. The MIMAD project compared to the ReTV project, for example, it's in the same domain, in the same context of, of using automated metadata, using new tools for, for smart purposes, but the focus is a bit more on the, the production side of things. So how do we create new content? How do we make use of the rich metadata and analysis services while we are creating content for of video services and, and audio services. So that is the bit of the storytelling within the project objectives and, and the other like media industry point of view, there is the, the accessibility side of things. So it's a multilingual project, the elements such as machine translation as a technology are present in the project and, and are part of the project. So that is maybe the, the industry side of things, but the, the other side is that we are also looking into the, the structures and, and the ways to model video content and, and media content and, and how to store and present that data, how to model those pieces of content that we work on on a daily basis. And if we go to details in just a minute, just as a background, the MIMAD project is also funded by, by EU and the, the consortium is it, it's a mixture of universities and research groups and then there are media industry partners, both from the, the media broadcasting side of things and, and also from the media archive point of view. So Wiley and, and Ina from France are providing the project with in-domain test data and, and metadata from their own media collections and also media files for the project to develop and, and test on. To simplify things, on the left hand side here you can see the different technical aspects of the project. So we have been and the research groups have been working on different analysis services and technologies, building algorithms, retraining models on, on different types of visual and, and oral analysis, for example. And also the project has been developing these structures for the analysis services for to exchange data and, and to store data that, that goes between the services and, and that is stored for, for them to work. And then there is the multimodal aspect of combining different analysis services to make even more, even smarter meaning on, on the media content and, and to make, make it closer to, to human perception and, and human insights instead of just low level features and extracting some basic visual cues, for example. But then another important aspect of the project has been the, the evaluation that, for example, Lyndon just mentioned. So we have been trying to bring this all different types of data into the existing tools, existing workflows of media production and, and the media industry. So we are trying to enhance and expand the, the current tools and current workflows and, and we are trying to validate and find the, the right use cases. Where, where does the automation fit and how should we do, for example, the UX design for these types of technologies? And how does it affect the, the current tools if, if we provide them with more data than, than what we are used to in, in the manual line of work? And then Last but not least is the area of comparing the, the human perception and, and the way people see and consume media with the way our current machine learning applications see the media. So there is also the 
the line of work that compares human perception with with machine learning solutions and algorithms and, and it's quite an interesting read for people who are in, into that line of work it all comes together in one way in the the prototype platform the project has been building it's it's based on the commercial product line craft flow but it's expanding the capabilities and, and the expanding the roles of that platform so through this prototype platform we can integrate different analysis services we can interact with with legacy metadata from existing media archives existing media databases and we also have user interfaces for for curation and and, and interacting with the data for, for different purposes and for different use cases so we we have tested some of the the workflows and some of the designs with this tool and there is also the the element of of exporting data into the existing tools so for example avid or adobe products and and we can test with, with the actual working environments of media professionals the, the things we have been developing but in the background there is the the richness of different analysis services i have listed here quite a few of them so most of these are these technologies these pre-trained models that come out of these these research groups they are open sourced you can find an overview on the on the github site here if, if you are if you wish to test things yourself and, and look into the details but there where it has made sense we have also been using commercially available services so plenty of research and plenty of de development has gone into making the technologies better and, and testing them with the in-domain data but but we have used also some some commercial services in the project So if that is the new side of things, the, the automation and, and machine learning powered services, then we also have the, the element of, of existing databases and bringing together different media archives, different media databases, which is, I think, quite an everyday question for media companies. So you, you do exchange content with different at different companies and, and you have your existing data resources that you want to leverage for, for something new. So how do we combine data that comes on one hand from, from the analysis services and on, on the other hand that comes from the existing kind of legacy databases of human curated metadata. But, and there is a lightning talk about this subject in, in just a minute by Ismail Harando, so you can hear the details there. But one of the more important aspects in all this is that we have to be able to, to exchange data between services and between applications in, in a smart way and in an easy enough way so i think one one of the areas of activity that that is worth promoting is the the interchange formats for different analysis services that that the project has been looking into so currently for example asr automated speech recognition service typically output their own custom format of data and for a project that is trying to make use of multiple different services it, it would be really helpful to to have harmonized output from all of the services so i think for example this could be one area of of standardizing work for the future to have the different visual analysis services and and other analysis services output somehow a, a common format and common elements in in their output and, but 
all of that has been the the background services, so to speak. There is the the area of testing things with actual users, running prototypes, running evaluations. So just to name a few, we have looked into the, the domains of media archive management, creating and curating metadata produced by automation, making use of that metadata in, in a video editing workflows, also in, in subtitling, both same language and, and translated subtitles. So with small user group tests, we have gathered the, the user feedback from, from people doing this these work, lines of work in, in their everyday work and, and the results can be found on the project website. So just to give you an example, here is one of the prototype user interfaces, which is already functional, but, but you can have multiple timelines of data and then you can interact with the data and curate it into the kind of content description you are after in your own use case. And it, it, it's not visible on, on the user interface, but one of the more interesting functionalities there is to zoom in and out on the data granularity. So for different use cases, you might want to have low level annotations or high level annotations. And that is one active line of work still in the project, how to combine these low level features into something meaningful on, on a higher level. And I, I'm pretty confident that there is still work enough for other projects also there. So those evaluations have been with the, the media professionals and we are doing some small scale consumer evaluations also with, with the actual public of the, the media services. So first of all, in terms of accessibility, if we machine translate existing subtitles, for example, to minority languages, how does that, how is that accepted or, or received by the audience and, and do they see it as something that still needs work or, or is it already helpful if we can provide them with, with different language subtitles for content that is in an unfamiliar language. And also we are looking into making use of the, the rich metadata in, in navigating and, and discovering media content. So these are still active, both, both of these evaluation tracks within the project. And here is just briefly about the thing I mentioned earlier, the comparing the, the human perception and, and the way people make sense of the content they see compared to the, the machine learning applications and what types of features do they extract from, from the media. And this comparison can be useful, for example, when we are figuring out what kinds of algorithms, what kinds of analysis services should be developed in the future years. So if we want to have that kind of use case, those kinds of use cases that, that are near the, the human type of interacting with the data and human type of work, so then we could get feedback from this kind of comparison to fuel that, that sort of, of that line of research. And also, we learn a lot about what types of annotations and what types of features can be useful in, in a multi-purpose setting. So if we don't have only a single point solution for one, one specific problem, then we can learn from, from this comparison what types of annotations would be useful for, for a human-like approach. But currently the, the pro project is nearing its end in next spring. Actively, we are still looking at, at multimodal content segmentation, for example. Also, we are running the, the final end user evaluations at the moment. And uh, to summarize some of the findings from, from a media company point of view from, from this project this far, 
is that that machine translation and, and natural language processing seem to be mature enough in, as technologies that, that the workflows of translating content, subtitling content, translating subtitles could make use of those technologies. So there is there is promise and potential in, in that area. And what we have all also seen is that the work flows and, and tools currently used in media production sometimes may struggle with, with all this automated metadata and, and large quantities of data. So there is still like this user experience kind of work to be done for, for the tools to present the data in a, in a meaningful way and, and to provide you with functionalities that let you interact and, and browse and search the, the data in a useful way. And we have also seen that, that in the accessibility area, for example, automating audio descriptions for blind people based on, on video captioning, automated video captioning is still something that is pretty far from, from the acceptable level. So there is still work to be done there. But I, I guess this gives you a good enough overview of the project and you can always find the latest news from the project website mima.eu and do if you are into the algorithms and, and formats and structures and pre-trained models do check out the, the github site mimad project so you can find the latest there and, and these still get filled in as the project progresses so in a couple of months time there should be more on the both on the website and on the github account but I guess that's all for me now, and I'm passing this back to Thierry, and I guess we have time for some questions also. Okay, thank you very much, Laurie. So, do we have any, any questions? Um, anybody? Okay. There's something from Lyndon in the chat. Oh, is there, um, oh yeah, okay, yes. So, um, right, so I'll, I'll just read this out. Um, uh, for Larry, are you looking at standardization for your data formats to avoid that MEMAD tools cannot exchange data with other commercial software? Mm, do I get this right? Do we try to avoid reusing the data? Is that um, the idea here or the other way around? Uh, let's see. Are you looking at standardization for your data format? So it's um, for your data formats, are you looking to standardize them? Uh, 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 yes, so, so that you can exchange data with other commercial software. So there's, if there's any other commercial software that's out there, how do you ensure that MEMAD is uh, using data formats, which will allow for interchange uh, with existing tools? Yes, the, the main idea is to create something that is interchangeable, so not to protect them. The technology but rather drive also other applications and other research groups to the to the area of standardizing their outputs and making them inter interchangeable with others so that is one of the goals of the project okay that's good and uh, uh rafael Tronsi, um yes he is part of the project from eurocom Good. <laughs> so, so he's uh, uh, saying uh, from Rafael to all panelists. Uh, um, yes, yes. So, so he's saying yes. And to change it is actually standardised EBU core and, and W3C web annotations, AVID export, etc. Okay, so that's good. Okay. Um, so, uh, are, are there any other questions uh, uh, that we have for uh, for Larry? And I can see there are also other project members online. So that's good. <laughs> there are specialists available. <laughs> you don't have to settle with me. Okay. Um, any other questions at all? No? Okay. Thank you very much, then, uh, uh, Lowry. Yeah.